Welcome back to A Current Affair. In our investigative reporting on the overboard death of the honeymooning groom, George Allen Smith, we're learning that criminal prosecutions for assault at sea are few and far between. Michael Bryant has this story of a rapist who got away. It was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime. It turned out to be the vacation from hell. You're not safe. You think you're safe in your cabin and you're not. It was the last night of Hope Ann Kroll's eight-day carnival cruise to the Caribbean. She was partying with some friends in the ship's bar when she realized she had had enough. She headed back to her cabin. I was in the elevator by myself. Nobody was with me. Went down below to the lower decks where my cabin was and got off the elevator, walked to my cabin, entered the room, and got undressed and basically passed out in the bed. The next thing I remember is waking up and having somebody lying on top of me. He held my mouth really tight and he just kept telling me, shh, 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 telling me to be quiet. And I screamed some more. He jumped up and all I remember him is pulling up his pants and running out of the room. Hope didn't know it, but before her ordeal was over, she says she would be victimized again, this time by the cruise line itself. Charles Lipcon is one of the top maritime attorneys in the country. He specializes in suing cruise lines. Cruise lines do not want to solve the crime because if their solution to the crime is going to cost them money, why would they want to solve it? Despite a confession under oath, Hope's rapist, a kitchen worker on the ship from Indonesia, was never brought to justice. The Florida State Attorney's Office told Hope on the phone that they decided not to prosecute. And I just started crying right then and there. I'm like, how can you? I said, you have a confession. He confessed. How can you just let him go? And she had told me that he's already gone from the United States, sent back. I was furious. Sadly, experts say Hope is not alone. I got statistics from one cruise line that showed in about a three and a half year period that 173 sexual assaults had been reported. There were zero prosecutions. And it's not just one cruise line. Lipcott says he has never heard of a prosecution for rape on any cruise line. He says suspects are often ushered off the ship at the next port and sent back to their native countries before getting arrested, a fact that he believes crew members are well aware of. Crew members have learned that if they sexually assault a passenger, that nothing bad will happen to them other than maybe they get fired. So the crew members know that it's open season on the high seas. In an in-depth investigation, a current affair has learned that lawlessness on the high seas occurs much more often than you dare to imagine. It's not only sexual assaults going unpunished. People disappear without a trace, often with little or no investigation, leaving their families devastated and hungry for answers. Here are just a few cases a current affair has uncovered. Amy Bradley disappeared from a Royal Caribbean ship March 24th, 1998. Glenn Sheridan, he went missing November 25th, 2004. James Scavone, he disappeared July 5th, 1999. Annette Meisner vanished December 4th, 2004. Carnival Cruise Lines says they followed proper procedure in those cases and they were not the result of foul play. Royal Caribbean says they fully cooperated with the investigation into Amy Bradley's disappearance. And of course, there's Royal Caribbean passenger George Smith. He went missing July 5th, 2005, somewhere in the emerald waters between Greece and Turkey. Lipcon says in the cases he's worked on, the cruise lines don't do enough to solve possible crimes. They're not looking out for, for the passenger, they're looking out for themselves. And therefore, they don't do a good job of preserving the evidence. As a matter of fact, they'll go out and, and clean up all the evidence, they'll vacuum away the evidence. In this videotape deposition obtained exclusively by a current affair, a passenger accused of rape tells how he was instructed by a cruise line security officer to lie on his statement. You were told by whom? I was told by the guy that was taking my the statement that he told you to write no sex was performed by anyone. Yes. Is that right? Yes, he did. Okay. According to Charles Harris, former senior chief security officer for Carnival, many security officers on these ships have never worked in law enforcement and have no idea how to investigate a crime. They could have been an engine tech or a 
Kevin Stewart, and he got the job on as a security officer. They don't have any formalized training, and so how can he expect them to conduct the investigation? Harris says that's exactly how the cruise ships like it. They don't want real investigators. He claims he was blocked from doing his job on many occasions. We would take the investigation, and we would interview the people and everything. That is, trying to go and search and do lineups and take, you know, profiles, that wasn't allowed of us, you know. They would limit it to where we could go and how we could do it. In a statement today, a Carnival spokesman denied they use untrained security guards. Shipboard security officers are required to have a background in law enforcement, military, or professional security, and are provided extensive training. Alleged criminal incidents are immediately reported to the appropriate law enforcement authorities. They also say they cooperate with law enforcement officials, but according to Lipcon, finding the right official is difficult with a ship that travels from country to country. And what happens when something goes wrong, such as in the George Smith case, all these countries play past the hot potato. None of them want to be stuck with having to do the investigation. Including the FBI, says Lipcon. The FBI is not anxious to get involved. They have told me under oath in depositions that this is not a high priority for them. The only hope, says Lipcon, is for cruise lines to make some important changes. They need to add security cameras in the passageways. They need to have more skilled security personnel on board. The laws regarding jurisdiction need to be examined, and there need to be better background checks on all employees. The U.S. government, he says, needs to stop passing the buck and get involved. If the Congress would get involved, uh, the, uh, the situation could be changed where the cruise lines would do a better job. In 1999, Senator John McCain called for more accountability on the part of the cruise companies. But that was six years ago, and there has been little progress, which is why Hope Ann Kroll decided it was time to speak out. She doesn't want to see what happened to her happen to another unsuspecting tourist on the trip of a lifetime. I want people to be careful when they go on these ships. Anything can happen anytime. In a statement, the International Council of Cruise Lines says passenger security is the industry's highest priority, with North American lines having the travel industry's best safety record. They say they have zero tolerance for crime, which they say is much lower at sea than on land. The ICCL says every ship has highly trained security and all crime is reported to the appropriate authorities. The FBI also told us violent crime in general is a top priority for them, including aboard cruise ships.